Hey guys, welcome back to Low T Nation's video series on a lot of the topics that you need to know if you're considering starting a testosterone replacement program. Today's video is going to be on the topic of estrogen and this is absolutely one of the absolute most crucial videos that you can watch in this whole series. Um, as the medical community is doing more and more research around high estrogen and low estrogen and the actual the causation of heart disease and osteoporosis and strokes and all these other catastrophic diseases, um, it is looking like estrogen levels are more and more and more linked to early mortality than they ever thought they were before. One of the issues with having too much estrogen in the body is there's some simple issues that aren't really that big of a deal, like gynecomastia, a little bit of weight gain, you lose your libido, there's some um, signs of depression you know, that, are, that come along with it as well. But heart disease is now proven absolutely um, correlated with high levels of estrogen. The most aggressive and severe and lethal forms of prostate cancer are tied almost directly to having excess uh, levels of estrogen in the body. Again, extreme weight gain, normally that's an estrogen dominant patient that's having to deal with that. And also clotting, um, which is causing strokes in patient, is being very much correlated to having extra high levels of, um, of estrogen. So it sounds pretty simple, right? Well, let's just, let's just dive bomb the estrogen levels in these guys' body, get it as low as we can, and they'll be protected from all those things. Well, not necessarily, um, that's not necessarily the case. They found that men with very low levels of estrogen actually have a three, over a 300% um, higher rate of heart disease. It's crazy. You're basically three times more likely to get heart disease if you have low estrogen levels. Um, the, there's a, there was a study done, and I'm going to put this study in the description of this um, video on YouTube, so go and take a look at it. But they looked at over 3,000 men from age 69 to 80, and men that had the lowest estrogen levels were twice as likely to die during the uh, study period than men that had regular healthy levels of estrogen and also testosterone. And also osteoporosis comes from having low estrogen levels to the point where a man is six to seven times more likely to break a hip if he has an elderly man, let's say over 65, um, six to seven times more likely to break a hip than guys with healthy estrogen levels. It's crazy, right? It's dangerous when it's high, it's dangerous when it's low, and it's not just dangerous like, hey, this isn't great for you. Like, it will kill you on either end of the spectrum. So we have to stay in the middle. What's the middle? It's basically like 20 um, picograms per milliliter to 30. Like, that's the sweet spot. Anything above that is starting to look like it's too high. Anything below that is starting to look like it's too low. And um, it is so important for long-term health to make sure that we manage that. And I tell you, this is definitely one of the more mismanaged areas in hormone replacement because most doctors aren't making sure that their patients are in that sweet spot. So where does it come from in a man's body? It's funny, like the male body hardly produces, naturally produces any. I mean, for the, the sake of this conversation, you, we can basically say the male body doesn't produce any. It converts it from testosterone, okay? There's an enzyme in the male body. It, it lives in breast tissue, it lives in prostate tissue, it lives in belly fat, it lives in all fat, but primarily in belly fat. And um, that aromatase enzyme actually grabs a hold of testosterone and converts it into estrogen. And we need estrogen, right? We need to be between that, that 20 and 30 range. So that's why that function is there in the male body. However, it can snowball out of control pretty easily. Let's say a guy puts on a few pounds, right? He puts on some belly fat. Now there's more of that aromatase in the body. So it's going to grab testosterone and convert that testosterone from doing testosterone stuff, right? Like, like getting rid of fat, putting on muscle, giving you more energy. It's going to convert it into estrogen. Now you are losing a little bit of muscle. You're putting on more fat. You have a decrease in energy because of more estrogen in the body. So what happens? You put on more fat, more aromatase, convert more testosterone back into estrogen, more estrogen dominant state, you put on more fat, more aromatase, less testosterone. So you can see how this can really spin out of control quickly and it's gotta be dealt with. Um, and you don't just give a guy testosterone to counteract this because if he's built up a lot of adipose tissue, there's a lot of aromatase enzyme in there looking for some testosterone 
And sometimes when you give a guy testosterone, it's just adding fuel on the fire, and they'll come back with almost exponentially higher numbers if you're not managing it right. So guys, you have to make sure that if you're going to take testosterone, especially you guys that have a little bit of uh, padding around the midsection, um, make sure you're using something to keep those estrogen levels between that 20 and 30 range. And you know, you don't really know what your body's going to do until you get on the, um, on the testosterone. That's why that, that quick follow-up is so important. We bring guys back in about seven weeks just to make sure, primarily we wanna know where they baselined at with whatever level of testosterone we prescribe them, but also what their estrogen levels look like and if we need to step in and help manage those estrogen levels, all right? So there's some things you guys can do outside of an aromatase inhibitor. And the aromatase inhibitors, by the way, they stop this at, this, at the, the enzyme level. They bind with the actual aromatase enzyme so it can't attach itself to the testosterone. So that means you have more testosterone doing testosterone things, right? So that just in itself is gonna free up that testosterone that would have been converted into estrogen, right? So there's more testosterone, obviously there's less estrogen, so we're kind of tipping that seesaw back in a more favorable um, setting so that your body can be more optimal, put on more muscle, burn more fat, have more energy, um, and also like focus and concentration and emotional things are very, very uh, closely connected to estrogen and testosterone because it's crazy how the symptoms of low T almost mirror the symptoms of estrogen dominance. Um, that's why a lot of guys think they kind of like just plateaued or got used to their testosterone prescription and it's not. A lot of guys that aren't being managed the right way, they get on testosterone, they feel amazing for a couple of months and then all of a sudden they start feeling bad again but their, their serum levels of testosterone are still pretty good. It's just that their estrogen levels are through the roof and now they're more emotional, they're more frustrated. Um, the signs and symptoms of early depression are also the signs and symptoms of estrogen dominance. So you guys can see how all this stuff is tied together. Um, the primary thing that you can do as a man to, re to naturally reduce estrogen levels is to lose fat. That's where most of the aromatase come from. If we get rid of that, it's gonna go away. Now you're gonna have more testosterone to do stuff. And again, it's why it's the first few steps in this are the hardest, right? Because that's when you have the most estrogen, the least amount of energy, um, the least muscle mass, right? And also just you, your body's not gonna recover and do as well. You're not gonna be as strong. But if you can start getting through that, you know, losing weight's tough, but if you can start getting through that, lose some of the weight, it'll get easier right because you're gonna have more testosterone less estrogen it's gonna get easier again you're gonna have more testosterone again as you continue to step down in weight um, other things eliminate alcohol alcohol drives estrogen levels through the roof um, things like soy products also have a very estrogenic effect on the body causing more estrogen and also uh, there's a chemical that's in a lot of the plastics and I'm not trying to get um, you know I don't want to talk too much about this just because there's not a whole lot of, of proof right now, but there's some xenoestrogens that are in plastics that we're drinking out of every day that look like they're leaching estrogen into our system as well. So eliminate the plastics if you can a little bit, um, reduce soy and alcohol consumption in your body, lose the belly fat, and if you have low testosterone naturally, you can end up with a very low estrogen um, condition, again, because that's where it comes from, right? That's, that's the place it comes from. So make sure your testosterone levels are managed optimally. Make sure that your estrogen levels, when they are, when you are on a, on a, a testosterone replacement program, make sure your estrogen levels are managed optimally and do the intelligent things, you know, again, limit alcohol, limit soy, limit some of these other things that leach estrogens into our body, and you will be setting yourself up for success long term because remember high estrogen and low estrogen are absolutely lethal um, usually especially in combination with low testosterone so that's why this is so important guys when we look at guys that have low t and low estrogen or low t and high estrogen they're the guys that die first in all these studies they're the guys that die the, the fastest they die first so we want to make sure that we protect our patients and also anybody that, that can pick up this information um, take it to your doctor if your doctor doesn't know what to do with this make sure you find someone that does on our website at lowtnation.com there's an ebook that you can download in that ebook we have a section on um, questions that you can ask your doctor to determine if they have the training necessary 
in order to, uh, to take care of you the right way. And we explain what the answers should be and why. So when you ask the doctor this question, you know what the answer should be. You know? So if the doctor can answer that, that's wonderful. You already have a relationship with the guy. It's beautiful. If he can't, find somebody that can, please, because your health and your long-term health can definitely, uh, will definitely be depending on that. So guys, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to hit us up. We're at lowtnation.com. The website uh, has a million ways to get in touch with us, or you can leave a comment in the description here on YouTube. Either way, I look forward to hearing from you guys. Thanks a lot. Have a great day.